Hey Angular folks, it's Brian, back again with another exciting signal forms example. If you've ever built a custom control using control value accessor, you know the drill. Several methods, properties, even providers, and a little too much ceremony just to update a simple value. Well, in Angular 21, that's all beginning to change. The new experimental signal forms API does the same job with almost no boilerplate. In this video, we'll take a real-world quantity control example and migrate it step by step from CVA to signals so you can see just how clean and simple it can become. All right, let's dive in. Here's the little demo app that we'll be using in this example. It's just a basic quantity selector control. Click the plus button, it goes up. Click the minus button, it goes down. And underneath the control, we're logging out the form value. So as we change the quantity, you can see the number update instantly. Everything works exactly as we'd expect, right? So now let's open this up and see how it's all wired together currently. First, let's open up the template for the cart component. Here we can see our quantity stepper component with a form control bound to it. That's coming straight from Angular's reactive forms module. Binding the control to this component means that this is a custom form control that uses control value accessor. We'll look at this in a minute. Okay, next we can see that we're outputting the string interpolated value of the quantity here. That's the value that we see updating below the quantity control as we adjust it. Now let's jump to the TypeScript for this component. Here we've got a form control named quantity. It's initialized with a value of one and we've added a min validator that prevents the quantity from ever dropping below one. Pretty simple setup. So far, everything here is standard reactive forms, but the interesting part is what's inside that stepper component. Now this is where things get a little verbose. Because this is a custom control, we need to make it talk to Angular's form API using the control value accessor interface. This means, there's several chunks of code in this component that are essentially needed just for the control value accessor. Here at the top, we've got a providers array registering ng value accessor. That's what tells Angular, hey, this component knows how to act like a form control. Then our class implements the control value accessor interface, which means we have to define a bunch of required methods. We have the value property here that's used to store and track the value of the custom control. Then we have the isDisabled property that's used to store and track the disabled state of the control. We've got the onChange and onTouched methods. Next, we have the writeValue method. This is called whenever the parent form updates this control's value. Then we've got the register on change and register on touched methods. The form calls these to let us know when to update it back. Then we've got the set disabled state function to toggle the disabled state of the control. That's already a lot of code. And that's before we even get to our own logic. At the bottom here, we've got our custom methods, increment and decrement. Each one updates the signal and then calls on change so Angular knows about the new value. This all works fine. It's how we've done it for years. But let's be honest, it's kind of ceremony heavy for something that just increments a number. Now, let's switch over and look at the template. Here, we're binding a class on the wrapper when the control is disabled. Inside this wrapper, we've got a minus button the displayed value, and a plus button. That's the entire UI, and the reason this is a custom control is because there's no native HTML control that works like this. We had to build our own interface for numeric input with custom increment and decrement buttons. Now that we understand what we're working with, let's modernize it. We're going to migrate this stepper and the form that uses it to Angular's new experimental signal forms API. Signal forms are brand new. They're only available in Angular 21. And for the concepts we'll be using in this tutorial, you'll need Angular 21 next.8. 
They're still experimental, so they probably shouldn't go into production apps just yet. But that time is coming soon. Let's see how we can make this control fully signal driven. Let's switch back over to the TypeScript. First, we'll remove the entire provider's array because we no longer need to register the control with ng value accessor. Then we'll delete the old imports array that included reactive forms module. Signal forms uses its own module and set of directives. Next, we'll replace the control value accessor interface with form value control. That's the new interface for signal-based custom controls. Now for the satisfying part, we can delete a lot of code. We'll remove the on change and on touched callbacks, the write value, register on change, register on touched, and set disabled state methods. All of them are handled automatically when you use the signal based API. We can also remove that private value signal. We won't need it anymore. Instead, we need to convert our value to a model signal. This creates a signal that automatically synchronizes between the form and this component, and it's required by the form value control interface. Next, we'll turn is disabled into an input signal. Now, Angular can toggle this control's disabled state without any extra plumbing. Let's simplify our increment and decrement functions now, too. We no longer need to call the onChange function. We just need to update the signal so we can really simplify this logic. Now this is clean, readable, and reactive. That's all we need. Now we need to switch over to the template. We only have one change to make here. At the top, for the isDisabled variable, we now need to call it like a signal. Everything else stays the same. The UI still looks and works identically. Now let's switch gears and migrate the form itself. First, we'll remove the old form control property completely. We'll also remove the reactive forms module here too, because signal forms don't rely on the old forms package. Instead, we'll create a signal to hold our form data. Let's call it model. And we'll use an object to set the initial quantity value. This will act as our form state object. Next, we'll use the new form function from the signal forms module to build the form. We'll pass it our form model signal. Then we need to pass a custom schema. Here, we're going to make this quantity control required. So we'll use the new required function. Then we want to add a minimum value validator. So we'll add the new min function. We'll provide this a value of 1 so that if it ever has a value less than 1, it will be invalid. So this creates a fully reactive form object based on our signal model, with both required and min validators applied to the quantity field. OK, now we need to import the new field directive. That's what we'll use in the template instead of the old form control. Now, we need to switch over and make a few changes in the template. First, let's replace the old binding with the new field directive. This is how we create a control binding with the new signal forms API. Then, we need to update the string interpolated value to use the new cart form property instead. And finally, let's update the validation message condition to use this new property as well. OK, that's it. Let's save and see if it all still works. Nice. Everything still works. We can click to increase and decrease, and our form value updates live. But right now, we can't actually trigger our validation, because our decrement logic prevents the value from going below 1. Let's tweak the decrement method to see if we can trigger our validation message. Let's just remove the math.max guard here. OK, now let's save and try this again. Now, when we click to decrease below 1, the validation kicks in. So this is all pretty slick, right? Everything works just like before.
but now it's powered by signals. And the best part? No more control value accessor. So what did we actually gain here? We went from a control value accessor that required several methods, a provider, and a bunch of plumbing, to a signal-based control that's just a few lines of code. No callbacks, no registration, no boilerplate. Signal forms are inevitable. They're more declarative, easier to reason about, and they work beautifully with the rest of Angular's modern reactivity system. If you found this helpful, like the video and subscribe for more quick, modern Angular tutorials every week. And hey, if you want to show some Angular pride, check out the Shieldworks United by Craft Tees linked below. They're for the ones of you who code like it's a trade. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.